my name is Miss Kimberly, and this is my teaching partner. Hi, everyone. My name is Miss Larry, and we're from UT, and we're here to teach you fun and exciting science lessons every week. Uh, so, we'll tell you a little bit about ourselves. Um, I'm a fourth year psychology major at UT with a focus in child development, and I eventually want to go into teaching. Hi, and I'm a senior at the UT, and I'm a biology major. But I want to show you something real quick. Do y'all know the university sign? Maybe the hand signal? Well, what you two like to do something like this, and we're going to use it today, okay? So, we're going to use another practice signal. When I say hook them, you guys will say horns, and that means I want your attention, everyone gets quiet and focuses on us, okay? So, let's practice it. Ready? Hook them, horns. One more time. Hook them, horns. Great job, everyone. Okay. Now, I want everyone to clear your desk, put everything away except for your science journal and your pencils. And right now, I'm going to pass out a piece of ice to you. And a paper towel. And a paper towel. Okay. I'll give you your ice. Wait for my instructions. Okay. So everyone take your piece of ice and hold up your hand tightly. <laughs> what stage is your piece of ice in now? Solid. It's a solid, right? Is anything happening? What's happening? It's melting. It's melting? It's melting. Okay. Is it changing in anything? What is it now? It's changing in the water. Water? So what's water considered? Liquid. Liquid, right? So we have the process of matter solid, and with the addition of heat transfer from your hand, we have it turned into a liquid. And that process is called melting. Can we put the ice down? And she put the ice down now. Okay, so so now that you've made some water from your ice, what would happen if I say if I put that water that melted into a beaker and put it on a hot plate? Boil. It boil, right? So what would, that, what would the boil happen? What would cause it to happen? It changed to a gas. Change to a gas, right? So when we add more heat from a liquid to a gas, what is that process called? Evaporation. Evaporation. That's correct. With evaporation, we have a liquid, and with, added, with more added heat, it transfers into a gas. Today's lesson, we're going to focus on how substances change and what makes them change. Alright, so before we begin our investigation today, we're going to go over some rules. So the first rule is we're going to be safe, because this is our science lab, so we're going to practice safety. And part of being safe means that we're not going to eat any of our materials today. So we're going to eat our materials? No. no. Right. So uh, the next rule is we're going to think like a scientist. So we're going to work together and think like scientists. The last rule is going to be to listen and look and pay attention when we do the hook em signs. So let's try that one more time. Hook em. Four. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and pass out job cards. You're going to have a different job each week. So I'm going to pass them out face down. And whenever I call out your color, you're going to flip over your card and read your jobs for today to your group. So you want to make sure that you're listening to the, whoever's reading their job because you want to make sure everybody is cooperating and doing their assigned job for today during the lesson, okay? All right, raise your hand if you have a blue card. Go ahead and flip your card over. You're going to read aloud to your group what your roles are for today. Principal investigator, I will make sure every group member is involved and has a turn. I will make sure the group completes all parts of it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pass out the worksheets for today. And the first thing you're going to do every time we hand out a worksheet for our lessons, you're going to put your name at the top. So go ahead and write your name at the top of your worksheet. All right, so we went over a couple of these temperatures already. I talked about them. We talked about... What, were, what did we start off with in the lesson? What did you have in your hand? Ice. 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 Okay, so the first temperature that we're going to look at is when ice freezes. So we're going to measure our te temperature, and what do we measure temperatures with? Thermometers. Thermometers, right. So the, when ice freezes, it freezes at zero degrees Celsius. And Celsius, if you're wondering, is a unit of measure that we use in science. So if you notice how Miss Kimberly wrote it, she wrote zero, this little circle on top, and a big C. So this means zero degrees Celsius. So make sure you write it out like that on your worksheets. 
All right, so the next temperature we talked about was when water boils. So what state does that start off when? We're boiling water, what state is that? Solid, liquid, or gas? Liquid. Liquid, and when we boil it, what state does it go into? Gas. Gas, and that happens at 100 degrees Celsius. So we're gonna write out 100, don't forget the degree sign and the Celsius at the end. All right, make sure also when you write this out that this is a capital C for Celsius. All right, so now you can go ahead and flip your worksheets over. And on the other side, you have different chocolates on there. List it out. So what we're gonna do today is try to measure how fast each of these different chocolates are going to melt. So the different chocolates that we have, we have white chocolate, we have milk chocolate kiss, you can notice it's a little bit bigger. We have a milk chocolate chip. And we have a semi sweet chocolate chip as well. So we're going to use the heat pack and try to melt these and see which one melts the fastest. But before we do that, go ahead and make your predictions on your worksheet of the order that you believe each of these are going to melt. So which one do you think will melt the fastest? All right, as you make your predictions, you can also look up at the dog cam and notice the different types of chocolate. So we have white, semi-sweet, milk chocolate kiss, and a milk chocolate chip. All right, so we're going to put all of each of these kisses. Are we going to take them out of the bags? No. Are we going to eat them? No. Right, so we're going to keep each of the chocolates in the bag, and each one of you will get one of the chocolates and you're going to get a heat pack as well. And you're going to place the chocolate, your chocolate, on whichever corner you're sitting at. You're going to place it on the corner of the heat pack. All right, so if you look on the side of your worksheet, you'll see here's the heat pack, and here's your chocolate inside the baggie on each of the corners. So where, whatever corner you're sitting at, that's where you'll hold your chocolate on the corner of the heat pack. All right, so we're also going to take the temperature of the heat packs. We want to see about what temperature these chocolates are melting. So we're going to place the thermometer under the heat pack and on your table. So, and I'm going to go ahead and activate the heat packs as I pass them out. You can go ahead and feel the heat pack and see what it feels like. And I'm going to go ahead and pass out your chocolates. And how you're going to do this, like I said, you're going to hold your chocolate on the corner with your finger and you're going to lightly press it. You're not going to push it, put a lot of force on it or press it down too hard. You're going to lightly hold it on the corner and then how you'll know when it's completely melted is your finger will be touching the heat pack because the chocolate will be all the way melted. And so Miss Kimberly is going to put a timer on the dog cam up here. So whenever your finger touches the heat pack and you know your chocolate is completely melted, you're going to look up here and record the time. Right, so make sure everyone can reach the corner of the heat pack at your table. And I'm going to come around and assign each of you a different chocolate. Make sure you know which chocolate you have. So look at the bag and look at the type of chocolate you have. And then you're not going to put your chocolate on, on the heat pack until I say go. And Miss Kimberly is going to start the timer. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, everyone knows which chocolate they have? All right, ready, set, go. All right, do you feel the heat pack yet? Is it melting? Um, a little bit. What's happening? They're sort of melting. They're melting. What was melting? The chocolate. The chocolate's melting. The chocolate's melting. What is melting? It's going from a which phase? A uh, solid to liquid. Very good. Yeah. Oh, yours looks like it's almost done. Yep. Don't forget to watch the clock. So you know, as soon as your chocolate's completely melted, you can record the time. Oh, the are almost done. Well, 
A piece of solid in there that it's not completely melted. Does yours? Yeah, that one looks like it's completely melted. Alright, what's the time? 221. So two minutes and 21 seconds. Remember, I'm going to ignore this last number. That's milliseconds. We're not going to pay attention to that. Students will struggle with determining when the melting point is um, for their chocolate. So just let them know that the chocolate should be flat with no bumps inside of it. They don't necessarily need to be completely touching the heat pack. Alright, so now you should have recorded all three different times except for the milk chocolate kiss. Now, is the milk chocolate kiss melted yet? No. How long do you think it'll take to melt? 20 minutes. A really long time. So we can just put on the time for the milk chocolate kiss more than five minutes. That way we can go ahead and move on to the next thing. So now that you have all of your times recorded, go ahead and work with your groups and answer the conclusion questions at the bottom of your page. The only prediction that was correct. And also, while you're answering your conclusion questions, materials managers, if you can collect all the materials from your desk. And principal investigators, if you can go ahead and take the thermometer from under your heat pack and read the temperature that of the heat pack. And Kimberly, Miss Kimberly, and I will come around and pick up the materials from your table. Alright, so if you flip your worksheets over back to the temperature chart, we're going to go ahead and write in some more temperatures up here. So the heat pack temperature, raise your hand if you can share with the group what you got for the heat pack temperature. Nicole, what did your group get? 45 degrees Celsius. 45 degrees Celsius. So go ahead and write the temperature of the heat pack in your chart. Don't forget the degree sign and the capital C for degrees Celsius. All right, and these other ones, we only have the heat pack to go off of, but I'm going to go ahead and share with you the different uh, melting points of the different chocolates. So, milk chocolate melting point is 20 degrees Celsius. That was milk chocolate. And white chocolate is 30 degrees Celsius. And the semi-sweet chocolate is 35 degrees Celsius. All right, so what about the milk chocolate kiss? What do you think the melting point of that is? Mary, what did you and Nicole come up with? We came up with 20 degrees Celsius because it's milk chocolate, even though it's a kiss instead of a chip. All right, so what about body temperature? Has anyone ever had a kiss or a chocolate bar and had it in your hand? What happens to it? It melts. It starts to melt after a while, right? So milk chocolate actually melts in your hands easier than any other type of chocolate. And that's because our body temperature in uh, Celsius is about 35 degrees Celsius. Good question. Whenever my mom takes my temperature, it always says 98 and not 35. That's a great point. So yes, 98 is also our body temperature, but that is in degrees Fahrenheit. So it's a different unit of measurement for temperature. Your temperature, your body temperature is also 98 degrees, but that is degrees Fahrenheit. So just so you remember, we're going to go ahead and write next to our 35 degrees Celsius an equal sign and 98 degrees Fahrenheit. So remember, that's a capital F just like the capital C. All right, so now you can go ahead and work with your shoulder partner and ask or answer the questions on the bottom of your worksheet. The next E of the five years that you'll explain your lesson is called the explain portion. 
Basically, the concept behind this is you want your students to be able to explain back to you the concepts and topics that you covered in the first part of the lesson. Uh, this portion includes going over vocabulary terms, also real-world applications such as if we left a glass of juice in the freezer, what would happen? What phase would this go through? Things like that. Also, we like to go through, ask a lot of questions, detail-oriented, like having them answer back to us to see what they know. But when you ask questions, never, ever, ever ask, can anybody tell me? That's not really engaging enough. It's allowing the students to sit there and not be interrupted and not respond. You can also ask students by their names, individually ask questions. Also, what's very important is we never ask yes or no questions. That's also not engaging to our students. Another method we like to use in the Teach Outreach program is table talk. It's where we give the students the opportunity to discuss in their table groups the answers to the questions that we ask. It's really effective, gets them talking to each other, makes them more interactive and engaged. Or you can also do a turn and talk to your shoulder partner, makes them more accountable and responsible for answers if you were to follow them. Also during the explain portion, you should refer back to your question of the day. The next E is the elaborate, which is basically an extension of what they just learned. So they apply everything they just learned to new concepts or new examples in the real world. For this lesson, the elaborate is using silly putty, so something that they can relate to, uh, to what they just learned. So basically, this silly putty changes uh, colors with when you apply heat. So if they hold it in their hands for a while, it'll change colors. And then you can explain to them how um, heat can also cause different changes, such as a color change. The second part of the elaborate is where the kids actually interact with each other and kind of try to act as the particles in the solid, liquid, and gas phases. So you would ask them, form a barrier in the classroom, and then you'd ask them to act as a particles in a solid, and then a liquid, and then a gas. You aren't necessarily telling them how to behave, but you're asking them, based on what they've learned throughout the lesson, how they could behave in a solid, liquid, or gas phase. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and pass out a piece of putty to each of you, and before you close it in your hand, I want you to look at it for about five seconds and observe the physical properties of the putty. So after your five seconds is up, I want you to hold it tightly in your hand until I say to open it. All right, go ahead and open it. What do you notice? It changed shape. It changed shape because your hand formed it differently. What else did you notice? It changed color. Right, so the heat from your hand actually caused the putty to change colors. So other physical properties can change with heat when you add heat to them as well. The last thing in the five minutes is evaluate. During this portion, we like to give what's called a show what you know. It's sort of like a quiz and it's individual work, but we don't like to call it a quiz, so that's why we call it a show what you know. It consists of four questions covering today's material. Also make sure you have time to go over the show what you know, and make sure that you leave the classroom with no misconceptions of other students. And if time permits, we're going to have journal prompts available for you and your teachers. This is describe phase changes and give an example that you've seen from today.